Today we are going to turn this inventory into an old school runescape bond within 24 hours. And I'm going to do it on a brand new account only using free to play worlds. Bonds are currently at an all time high of nearly 7 million gold because of the holiday season. So that adds an extra nice challenge. I will be using a lot of different methods in this video but one thing I won't use is flipping items in a grand exchange. As it can require a little bit of luck and skill. The point of this challenge is to show methods that anybody can use with for the most part no requirements. Let's get into it. Alright there we go, tutorial island is done. Let's go and make some money, I'm really excited for this. I haven't played on a normal account or used the grand exchange in years. First little plan is collect some cow hides from the people killing the cows, maybe pick up some bones, some beef that we can cook for later, we have some food available for the uh, stronghold. And yeah, get some uh, beginner cash. There we go, got my inventory ready and I'm going to quickly suicide in Lombridge to get all my run energy back. And then with the full run energy we can do the stronghold. Teleport to the stronghold with the vampire and we are off to get the 10k. And there is the first 10,000 GP on the account, beautiful. Now this 10k is actually very important because we can do a lot with this. And uh, I have a couple ideas. Alright, going to sell the rest of my stuff real quick to get some more money. And I cannot sell cow hides. Your account will be restricted for trading until the account has 10 quest points, a skill total of 100 and has spent 20 hours in the game. Okay, so I could get all those requirements and wait 20 hours and come back and continue the challenge. But we're not gonna do that. I don't think, um, I think it's more fun if we deal with this restriction. I think I will get the quest points and I might get the skill total as well. But I'm not going to wait 20 hours. But yeah, I guess we won't be able to sell cow hides right now. There's Romeo and Juliet quest completed, Cook's assistant completed, and there we go, Ernest the chicken completed as well. We now have 10 quest points just in case we need it for later. And I guess it's some nice uh, account progression as well. And I bought myself a book of chronicles and a couple of pages. This is going to be the main method to get back to the Grand Exchange fast. You could also train your magic and go for Varric Teleport, but... I thought this would be a pretty easy way and you can just directly buy it in Draenor. So a little bit less than 10,000 GP left and I'm going to spend it all in one store. Check this gem store and this Uncut Sapphire is 25 GP and it's 260 in a Grand Exchange. So pretty okay way to make money but there aren't enough in stock so I moved on. Part of this challenge for me also is just experimenting because I don't know the best methods. I just want to experiment and uh, look around and see uh, what's good and what isn't good. So that's part of the fun. Right, so my way to get the first bit of GP is spending all of the GP in the crafting store in Alcarit. You can use several stores in the game and make money, but this is one of my favorite because you can buy thread in uh, big amounts as well. So you can spend your money fast and there's several things to buy. My favorite things to buy are amulet molds and necklace molds. And then a stackable needle and thread is pretty good. And there we go, that is the final inventory finished. I've spent almost all of my GP and I got a lot of molds and other items from the shop. So we're going to make the first trip to the GE, sell everything and see how much money we make. Made some money insta selling some of the molds. Unfortunately it didn't insta sell but you can probably lower the price and insta sell everything for a lower amount of profit. But I didn't mind waiting a little bit so I gave it a little bit of time and I eventually sold most of the molds. And I let the rest sit in the GE a little bit and sell it over time. There's probably better opportunities for early money, maybe um, the Vera clothing store or the general store items. But I remember the crafting store being pretty good, so that's what I picked. But you can pick whatever store you want for the first bit of money. So the next thing I decided to try out was making dyes in Draenor. And I checked all the price of the ingredients and I noticed that onions are only 47 GP each. Which means the total cost to make one yellow dye is around 100 GP. And they can sell on a GE for somewhere between 300 and 500. Which means you can make a pretty decent amount of profit with pretty much no requirements. So I decided to try it out. I bought myself supplies for 1000 yellow dyes and I went to Draenor Village. And there we go, that is the last die made. That took 1 hour and 15 minutes to make 1000 dyes. I've also set up bank tabs for this method to quickly bank and withdraw the required items. We've also sold off the rest of the molds while making the dyes. And to my surprise, all of the yellow dice insta sold, so that was very nice. And we now have a total of 469,000 GP. With a total time spent of around 2.5 hours. Not too bad. 
I wanted to try out some shop selling, so I decided to buy some pickaxes, but then realized the limit was only 40, and we were gonna need a lot more than that to make money. So I decided to sell them back and go for something else. And I somehow sold them with a 10 GP profit per pickaxe. So I accidentally made 400 GP. But yeah, you can uh, ignore that pretty much. I looked a little bit more on the wiki uh, and looked at some shops. And I think the ranging shop in Remington is going to be extremely good for this challenge. You can sell a lot of uh, bows with quite a bit of uh, profit so i'm gonna buy some bows in the ge and go and check out that store and see how much money we can make i bought some maple longbows maple short bows and willow longbows so as you can see in the price checks it is worth quite a bit more than uh, the grand exchange so i think i'm going to sell 10 per world and then quick hop you can set up quick hopping with the uh, rune light add-on using whatever button on your uh, keyboard and you can also set up custom shift left click and um, left click sell 10 while being in the store. So that makes it extremely easy. Finished selling all the bows and we now have 630k. So we made like 130k actually and this took not a lot of time. Um, so this is a very good method. Now I will say if you sell 10 per world after you hop through all of the worlds you have to usually wait like 5 or 10 minutes before you can hop through all the worlds again because of the restock time. But you could choose to sell only 5 per world and then you can basically continue doing this however long you want because the bows will just slowly disappear over time. Uh, you also will make more profit if you only sell 5 per world so keep that in mind. Before going back to the G, I'm going to hop through all of the worlds and buy out the crafting store in Remington. Probably a lot of you don't know that there's a crafting store here and they sell the same supplies as all grid, but there's a lot less people here. So the threat should always be in stock. So you can do the same thing as an all grid and uh, yeah, make a little bit of money. There we go. Hop through all the worlds. We got 6,000 threat, 180 needles and a couple molds as well. So that's a little extra bit of profit on the way back. Sold all of the stuff and we now have 679k GP available. Selling the bows was such a good method so I'm going to do a little bit more of it to make a little bit more uh, base GP to try out some other methods. This seems to be a pretty reliable method if no one is selling bows in the shop so yeah why not let's do a little bit more and let's make some more money. And every time we expand the cash stack we can buy more bows and bring more bows to the store so that, that works out really well too. And we are done selling all of the bows. I tried willow bows this time with maple bows and that worked really well too. We have 986,000 GP, almost a mil. And we are, let's see, three and a half hours in. Not bad. All right, I'm going to bet and I'm going to leave in some offers for tomorrow. I'm going to be working on some of my other accounts so I can just leave this in. Now for the pickaxes you kind of have to wait over time because the limit is only 40 per 4 hours. But I just want to try out a different store and I think the pickaxe store is pretty cool. Now for the maple bows you don't have to leave this in for a cheaper offering. The only benefit of waiting is profiting a little bit extra GP per bow in each store. But you can also just insta buy and it will work fine as well. Uh, but just wanted to try out and see if I could buy them uh, over time. And yeah the next day I decided to log in on the account again and... Unfortunately, not all of the pickaxes were buying, so I only got a couple of them. But the maple bows all sold, so that was really nice. Made my way over to the Dwarven Mine to sell my pickaxes to the store. And as you can see, the profit margins are quite large on the pickaxes. Almost 500 GP profit per adamant pickaxe. And around 400 GP profit on the mythal pickaxe. So if you can get your hand on a lot of these, you can make a lot of money real quick. And there we go, sold all of my pickaxes for a nice bit of profit. Invested the rest of my GP into bows again and we are gonna sell them again in Remington. This will be the last bow selling session for now until I try out uh, some other methods. And we are getting close to the 4 hour mark. There we go, finished selling all of the bows and we are now up to a bit over 1.4 million GP. This honestly takes... A lot of effort to make money in free to play. I'm not gonna lie. I did not expect um, it to be this bad. But it is working. Uh, we are making money. So I bought a full inventory of air staffs in Varok. And I want to try and sell them a bit over the uh, normal price. And see if they sell over time. 
if it does work we have a nice passive money maker while doing all this stuff and if it doesn't well we can just sell it in the jeep so we'll have to see if this uh, works or not Put in all of my air stats for a little bit under 2000 GP and in the meantime I'm investing all of my GP into jewelry and I'm going to try out the store in Port Sarim. You can sell jewelry in Port Sarim for quite a bit of profit so um, yeah let's see uh, how it goes. Right so checking some of the prices this looks very good. Um, the problem is there might be a lot of jewelry already in stock so we might not get as much profit but excited to try this out. Managed to sell all my jewelry and we are up to a little bit over 1.7 mil. Now in this video I will give you my honest opinions about methods and I would not recommend this. There's way too many people selling jewelry. I had to wait quite a bit of time to uh, sell all my stuff here. I think it's just a way more known method uh, selling jewelry to the store. So yeah probably not the best one because it could take a long time before you uh, find empty stores and you might not make as much profit so don't think i'll do this again also i'll be upfront about the air staffs that shit didn't work so yeah i'm just gonna dump them get my gp back and take the loss all right it is time to make some dice again i really want to try yellow dice again but this time with energy potions I think if I use energy potions and sacrifice a little bit of profit, I can make dice a lot faster. Um, so yeah, we're gonna see how long it takes this time to make 1000 yellow dice. All right, we are done making all of the dice and that took like 55 minutes only this time. So we saved 20 minutes using energy potions, making 1000 yellow dice, which means the profit per hour is actually a lot higher with energy potions. And literally everybody can do this. You don't need any requirements. All you need is onions, a little bit of GP and energy potions. So I actually really, uh, really like this method. It is very click intensive though. But as are most things in free to play money making. All right, I'm going to put the dice in the GE. We'll just let it sit. And uh, in the meantime, since I have to wait anyways, I'll do some more bows in the Remington store. People need yellow dice for quests and... Uh, I guess all the stuff. I don't really know why people need these. The only thing I can think of is the Goblin Village quest. But they do sell over time. Uh, sometimes they insta sell. Sometimes it takes a little bit to sell them. Depends on how many people are buying them. You can check that beforehand if you want to do this method. But yeah, I'm just going to sell them over time. And in the meantime, I'm going to do some more bows. I invested all of my GP into uh, Maple Bows and Willow Bows. And we are off to the store. There we go, another bow selling session completed and we now have almost 2.5 million GP. Starting uh, to look like something. And we have also sold all of the yellow dice over time for another 439k. So we are almost up to 3 million GP. And we are 6.5 hours into the challenge. That Remington bow selling method is too good man. Like I could do that literally for the rest of the time to make a bond and I'll be done pretty quickly i think but what's the fun of that we're gonna we have to try some different stuff as well and i looked around and experimented with some other methods and i tried to buy the separate rune armor pieces and then make a full set out of it and sell the set and this will work um however it's just gonna take too much time to sell the uh rune armor set over time and i didn't really want to bother with it but i think it is a method that can work um you just need to have a bit of patience with it after looking around for a bit, I found a very odd method of making uncooked apple pies. I bought the pie shells and apples for a pretty okay price. And I was able to sell the uncooked apple pies for uh, quite a bit of profit. So that was the method I had my eyes on. Now, to be able to do this method, you need 30 cooking. So that's what I decided to work on real quick. Bought some raw fish in the GE. I spent a little bit of money on this, probably like... 10 or 20k but i thought it would be worth because if this method was uh, good i would make all my money back really quickly and there we go took like 15 minutes got myself 30 cooking we can now make uncooked apple pies and i decided to set up some bank filters for this again to uh, quickly do this method worked out really well and yeah i made a lot of uncooked apple pies and I managed to sell my uncooked apple pies instantly and they even sold for more than I put them in for. So that was a nice surprise as well. I was able to make over 300,000 GP per hour AFKing and making uncooked apple pies which is amazing. And yeah since this method worked so well I invested a lot more GP and I bought 4,000 of each this time and um, yeah made more uncooked apple pies.
Now looking back at this, this was actually a huge risk because later into this challenge they didn't end up selling. So if you want to try any of these methods, make sure you check the prices beforehand and check if people are actually buying the uh, pies. Because if no one is interested in buying the pies, this method will not work. So be aware of that. I moved to the Varric West Bank to have a little bit faster access to the bank. We'll speed up the method a little bit. And the reason I really enjoyed this method is I was able to play my other accounts while doing this. And I was just able to AFK and make money pretty much in free to play. So yeah, that was very surprising. I could have sticked with selling bows in the Remington store, but experimenting with some methods um, made me find this and it was actually quite good. After making 1260 pies, I decided to go to the G and see if they sell for the same amount as last time. And they sure did. So I was all clear making the rest of the pies. And after making and selling all of the pies, I ended up with almost 3.5 mil. Now we did spend a lot of time AFKing and making the pies, but in my opinion it was totally worth it because it was completely AFKable. Not as much profit as selling bows in the Remington store, but definitely a nice change of pace. And the next method I decided to try out was buying something from a store and not selling. I decided to buy jerk packs in Draenor. The price of a jerk pack is 140 GP. And you can sell the jerks in the Grand Exchange for 3 or 4 GP. So quite a bit of profit for not a lot of work. So I did this for a bit over 20 minutes and I managed to buy 50,000 jerks. Which if you slow sell in a GE is worth 200,000 GP. So not a bad method for no requirements. And while being in Draenor I came up with an idea of buying teleport cards in the Diango's toy store. I decided to do this for an hour to see what the potential profit of this method is. You can buy the cards for 150 each and you can sell them in a G for between 200 and 300 each. So depending on how much people want to buy these cards in a grand exchange you can make quite a bit of money. And after doing this for an hour I managed to buy 3500 teleport cards. I checked the price of the teleport cards the day before and they were insta selling and buying for around 300 GP. So it was pretty unfortunate to see that the cards didn't insta sell today. But I will just be slow selling them over time while using other methods. While waiting for the cards I checked the price of uncooked apple pies again. Um, the supplies to make an uncooked apple pie went up a little bit. But to my surprise the uncooked apple pies were selling for 900 GP each. Now I still don't know why so many people were looking to buy uncooked apple pies for so much money. So if you guys have any idea let me know in the comments below. After a while the cards were still not selling so I insta sold a couple of them and then I lowered the price and just let them sit in the G again. I'm not sure why they were selling for such a high price the day before. Maybe that was uh, luck or someone really needed them. But after seeing this I definitely do not recommend you to use this method for money. It can potentially be good but only if people need the cards. Um, they didn't need the cards on that day. So yeah you're just gonna have a pretty high risk that you're gonna have a bunch of these cards and you have to slow sell them over time. But you can potentially make between 200 and 400k per hour but with very high risk. Finished making all of my pies I made almost 5000. Lowered the price a little bit in the GE to sell them and they all insta sold for the same price. I've made a huge amount of profit making uncooked apple pies which is pretty crazy. And we are now almost up to 5 million GP. Alright it is the next day. And nice I did sell all my teleport cards finally. That was uh, kind of a bad decision looking back on it. But uh, we have 5 mil now. Now let me see. Uh, I want to check the apple pie rates. Because it's such a good method. Okay this went up in price which is not good. Wow this isn't even buying. Okay. Well, that's kind of bad. Um, what about this? Okay, this is selling. Uh, wait, why are apples not selling? That is a bit of a problem. I think even if I buy it for this much, it's profitable though. Uh, wait, what? Let me try 200. Okay, they buy for 188. So let me add this together. 188 plus 450 is 638. And they sell for nothing. Wow. Okay, they aren't selling right now. 
Uh, yeah, I guess no one is buying them. Which means I should probably not do this right now. They were selling pretty consistently yesterday for like 900. Uh, no one is selling them right now. So yeah. Yeah, no one is buying these. Okay, well, that means I'm not going to use these uh, for now. Even though the margin is still really good if they sell for this price. But I guess no one is buying them. So I might try it tonight or, or I just don't do this anymore. But yeah, margins are like these methods are really depending on the... Like if people actually buying this stuff. Because if no one is buying it then yeah it's pretty pointless. Alright let me try the strength amulets again. I want to see if this has any good margin. Let's see. Okay that's like 1120. So yeah this is not as profitable still. Yeah it's like. Yeah it's not enough profit to, uh, to do this. You only profit like. I don't know, like 20 coins, 15 coins. It's not good, but sometimes that can be pretty high. Same with other jewelry, so... Right, well... Does this even sell for anything? I'm curious. Yeah, sell it. <laughs> it doesn't even sell for 1 GP, that's ridiculous. Okay, well... <laughs> that is crazy. That shows that there's actually potentially money to be made buying things for 1 GP as well. So you could put like apple pies for 1 GP in and I don't know, maybe you buy some. Could be a way to make money, I don't know. I'm not going to use that though. Alright, I decided to try out the jug pack method again. You sometimes see bots buy the jug pack, so be aware of that. But I tried to do it in non-peak times and there was literally no one here, so that was really nice. Managed to buy 104,000 jug packs in a bit less than an hour, so pretty good. Assuming I insta dumped the jugs in a G for 3 GP each, this is like 150 to 200k per hour. And if you wait longer and sell them for 4 GP each, you can make even more money. So pretty chill method for no requirements. And we are now 13 hours into the challenge, not bad. I decided to dump all the jugs in a G for 3 GP each because I'm impatient and I wanted the money. And I'm going to try out the uh, bow method again, selling some bows. Uh, I have a much larger cash stack right now, so I want to see if that uh, makes a big difference. I don't have to uh, go back and forth to the G as much and save some time there. So yeah, let's see how many bows I can buy. All right, I pretty much bought out the complete Grand Exchange. I think I bought all the bows that were available. Had to pay up a little bit, but... Um, doesn't matter too much because I'm still going to profit a lot. I've also decided to buy uh, some adamant arrows this time because they are pretty easy to buy and you make a pretty large margin on them as well. So definitely uh, buy adamant arrows as well. And yeah, this is the inventory I have. This is all the bows. I still have a pretty large cash stack left, but I literally couldn't buy any more bows. No one was selling them in the G and I didn't want to wait. So yeah, let's see uh, how much money we can make. All right, and that is the session done. I'm getting kind of tired and sick of this method. But from what I've tested so far, this seems to be uh, the best method. But yeah, after doing this shit for so long, I'd recommend everyone to just buy a membership once. And we now have 6.1 million GP. We are getting so close. We need a couple hundred thousand more GP and we can buy the bond. It's time to experiment a little bit. I want to make some... Buy shells myself from scratch and see uh, if I can make some money. Unfortunately, I found out the buy limit on buy dishes is only 500. So I guess I'll make 500 and see how much profit I can make. I also bought some buckets of water and pots of flour and we can now make all the stuff. Basically, you grab 9 of each and you AFK some pastry dough. Finish making 500 and now we put it in the pie dish. And there we go, finish making 500 pie shells from scratch. And there we go, sold all of the pie shells. There you can see all of the prices. You can sell the empty pots and empty buckets when you're done for a little bit of money back. And I managed to make 100,000 GP in like 25 minutes. So actually not a bad method because it's partly uh, pretty AFKable. Making the pastry dough requires a little bit more attention, but putting it in a shell takes very uh, little effort. So pretty nice method. I decided to make some more easy AFK money, so I made 2,000 pastry dough. Not putting it in the shells because I couldn't buy them because of the buy limit, so I decided to just make the dough, which was also a pretty decent profit. I managed to sell a large chunk for 360 each, and I sold the rest over time. 
And with a bit over 6.5 mil, I was super close to being able to buy a bond from scratch. So what better way to finish it with a bit of bow selling? It's just too reliable. And after buying out most of the bows from the GE, I was ready to go to the store one last time, do a big session and make enough money to buy a bond. There we go, the final supplies. I'm really happy to be done with this shit, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I can see any more maple bows, but this was an incredibly good method in this uh, challenge. Really happy I found it. And yeah, let's go to the G and see if I can get my old school runescape bond. All right, let's put all of my cash stack in and see if it buys 6.8 mil. There we go, it bought. Ooh, wow, I even got some GP back, okay. So we have an old school runescape bond and 150,000 GP left. How much time did I spend on this? We've spent almost 17 hours, which is actually a lot faster than I originally thought. Um, way less than the 24 hours. And we got a couple uh, skills in the process as well. We did three quests. So uh, yeah, pretty happy with the result. I've had another idea with this account, uh, a follow-up video where I use this bond and uh, see if I can maintain a bond on this new account. Use whatever methods I can find in the members and um, progress the account a little bit while also maintaining membership. That might be helpful for some of you as well. So let me know if you want to see that uh, follow up video. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, really helps in the algorithm. Hopefully uh, I helped some of you guys out and uh, have a great day everyone. Bye bye.